Is who's, who's answered, but we'll let all the candidates answer this one. Uh, how do you feel about an increase in taxes for corporate companies, especially the oil and gas sector? And uh, we'll give, uh, we'll give uh, Stuart a chance to answer that one. Like I mentioned, the Wild Rose Party isn't going to uh, increase uh, any taxes, uh, corporate or royalty rates. We currently take in more taxes and fees in uh, Alberta than the rest of the country. It's uh, not getting uh, more money that's the problem. We outspend uh, Ontario on programs by $2,500 per person. For a family of four, that's $10,000. We outspend BC about $2,000. We spend 30% more on health care than the rest of the country, like I mentioned. If we only even spent half the increase of $2,500 that, that debt-ridden Ontario spends, so we only spent $1,250 more than them, allowing for the fact that we're a fairly rural province with lots of scattered infrastructure, we could save $5 billion. That would have a substantial part of our uh, our, our problem solved. Well, the Wild Rose Party has a, a plan to cut expenses. I'll go into it in detail in my concluding remarks, but some of it uh, involves dealing with uh, uh, management positions. We have a manager-staff ratio of a one to five. We even have government departments that have a one to one management uh, ratio. We have communications departments. Uh, we, we have uh, 200 plus communications people, cabinet ministers have uh, countless communications people's press secretaries. We spend millions on that. So uh, re reallocating some of those uh, management positions to frontline services is one of the ways. Spreading out the infrastructure program for a couple more years, uh, one more year from five to six will save a lot of money. And I'll go into the rest of the savings uh, in my concluding remarks. Either one of you gentlemen want to address that question, Rob? Well, we spent seven months, uh, when the Premier asked me to become Finance Minister in September of last year, we spent seven months looking at the financial picture of the province and looking what kind of budget we bring forward. And you know, we talk about corporate taxes and you know, we talk about big companies, but the fact of the matter is there's lots of small companies that are corporations. There's lots of companies that hire less than 100 people, some less than 50 people that are corporations. And they would be also affected by corporate taxes if we increase them. So, and you know, the, uh, my friend down at the end there talked talk about 14,000 job, jobs and we didn't care. We did care. And that's one reason we didn't touch corporate taxes. Because we don't want to see more people laid off. The oil and gas industry right now is in trouble. We have small companies that are hanging on by a thread. Yeah, we have the big companies like Suncor and Syncru. There's lots of small energy companies that are hanging on by a thread right now and doing everything they can to keep the doors open and keep their people employed. So we want to make sure that we do continue to save jobs and we do continue to uh, put a climate in place that's going to attract more investment. You know, again, you know, the Wild Rose likes to throw a bunch of numbers, but you know what? He has no facts of all these numbers. I have one press secretary. I have the smallest department in government. I have the smallest office in government. And if you go through the expenses of governments in 2008, I have the least expenses of any minister in government. And I've had the aboriginal relations file, I've had the, uh, the uh, environment and SRD file, and now I'm the finance minister. And I will debate the Wild Rose critic when he becomes an MLA, if he's so lucky. But I'm not about to sit and just debate anybody on the street over the budget. He gets elected as MLA, be happy to debate him in the House about what the budget is and why our budget is best for Alberta moving forward. Well, anyway, the yeah, the NDs are proposing tax increase, but not to every every Alberta families. That's the ones that, that we've paid enough. We're always paying. They come back to us time and time again and make us pay. Well, in our proposal, you look at you look at the royalties, 
What are we getting? A penny on the dollar royalties. That's what we're getting set up by Ralph Fine. Have they, have they done anything or increased them since? No, they haven't. Our province is short of money. We need money to invest in education, invest into our students. Health care, it's a mess. We need money to do this. And the only way that we can come up to do this is we're saying everybody should pay. It's fair. All we're saying is we're going to increase corporate tax by 2%. And the world's going to fall apart, according to the PC at the end. It's going to come to an end. The sky's going to fall. We're going to lose jobs. Yeah, okay. BC increased their tax by 2%. They gained jobs. So did California. So the sky is going to fall there, and it didn't, didn't go over BC either. All we're saying is we'll cut the PC wasteful corporate tax breaks by increasing the Alberta corporate tax from 10% to 12%. And we also want to increase taxes paid by the wealthy. We think that it's fair enough. If they can afford uh, all kinds of things, that they should pay. And we're saying under our plan, everybody else, 90% of tax filers get a break from tax and fee increases that Prentice is proposing in his so-called plan. Well, if it's such a good plan, why isn't the Premier supporting it? He's not mentioning it anymore, but our finance minister is. Thank you. Yeah, there's no rebuttal in the question period. You answer the question, and uh, that's what that what does gets answered. This one is interesting, and I don't know. Uh, perhaps the. Uh, I'll give all of them an opportunity to answer, of course. This, this is a question that says, if a minority government is elected, will crossing the floor to get majority be an issue? Do you understand the question? Shall I repeat it? If a minority government is elected, will crossing the floor get a majority, get majority be an issue? Okay. So we'll start with Eric. Well, <laughs> really, that, this is interesting. I'm going to say, uh, in our case, no. <laughs> Absolutely no. Definitely not. It's not in, in the way we do our, our business. We're not in favor of jumping ship or anything else. We have our own policies, and we think we're on the right track with what we're doing. So why would we jump ship? No. Thank you. Stuart, do you want to answer that question? Or? Yeah, sure. The Wild Rose Party has a two, one policy related to floor crossing, and that policy is that uh, I mentioned during my uh, introductory remark that uh, if we form government, you'll have to sit as an independent before you cross the floor. Plus, each of the candidates has signed a contract uh, that they cross uh, pay $100,000 uh, should we not be able to uh, form government. Of course, the other thing you have to remember is when the floor crossing incident occurred, it was a matter of duty, and a lot of people forgot their duty. Um, Daniel Smith forgot her duty. She had a duty as the leader of the official opposition to provide the province of Alberta with an, offer, uh, with, uh, with an opposition. She forgot about that duty. Mr. Prentice had a duty as Premier of this province, not to further his own party, not to get a few extra seats that he didn't really need, because he had a majority, and he forgot about his duty. And then we have Robin Campbell in the caucus, and they quite clearly had to okay this uh, uh, floor crossing. And as a group, they forgot about their duty. Their duty was to govern at the time, not to get involved in floor crossing issues. So three sets of people forgot about their duty when it came to floor crossing. Just remember that. Rob, do you want to address that? Sure. 
Well, I don't plan on crossing the floor because I plan on forming government this election, so that's not an issue with the Progressive Conservative Party. But let's make one thing clear. Uh, first of all, the Wild Rose talks very tough about you know, we're going to have a $100,000 bond and all this. I'll suggest you it's unconstitutional to start with, to hold anybody to that. So, I mean, and the fact of the matter is, is that the Wild Rose approached us and said they want to come and join our party. And the reason they wanted to come and join our party is because the MLAs that crossed the floor wanted the ability to do more for their constituents. They wanted to be part of the government and they wanted to be able to make a difference in their writings. So, you know, everybody does things for different reasons. And, you know, I, I'm not one to sit and uh, play Monday morning quarterback as to why they did what they did. Uh, they have to go back to their constituents and they have to look their constituents in the eye and, and talk about what they did. And that was it for each of them to make that decision on their own. But I can say to you, as your MLA, I would not cross the floor. I would quit first. I'm quite happy being a progressive conservative. I have faith in our premier. I have faith in our party. I have, my, I have faith in myself to be able to do the job that you've elected me to do, looking after our riding, looking after this community. So again, everybody has to do what they have to do. But I can be very clear to you that there will be no floor crossing from this individual. Thank you. I hope you're not getting bored with some of these questions, but uh, this one is an interesting one. Uh, and I don't know where the number comes from. Uh, it's part of the question. But it's, it says special education funding full time equals 0.4. 0 0.4. Now, whatever that is supposed to mean, may, may make some sense to these gentlemen, but it certainly doesn't to me. But it says, so explain how that works. Do we allow these students to come to school and learn for 0.4 of a school day? Do you understand the question? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start at the other end and we'll let, um, let Rob do that one first. I'll give a crack at because I got a brief course on it today when I was at, uh, at, at Dakin School. So basically what the question is saying is that when you're in kindergarten, you get funding for, for teacher's aid. And then when you go into grade one, that funding changes. And basically what it happens is your teacher's uh, assistant or aid is only there half time, correct? So basically what it says in a, in a very uh, unacceptable way is that if you have autism, for example, you only have for 0.4 of the time, and the rest of the time, you're okay. Correct? Yep. Right. So what uh, what the question is about is is that what are we going to do to uh, to look at that funding? I can say to you that uh, just by pure coincidence, uh, the premier phoned me this afternoon after my visit to uh, to uh, to Dakin School, and we had a good conversation about education. And let me make it very clear that we are not going to cut teachers' aides. We are not going to cut special needs programming for special needs kids. We're just not going to do that. We will work with the school boards. Uh, there's money available out of the reserve funds to look after the, these programs. And we will make sure that uh, these, these kids are looked after. I mean, you know, uh, for me today to, uh, to visit the school and watch these kids was, uh, you know, was, uh, was an interesting afternoon because you saw some of the most vulnerable. And one of the things that we did in the budget that was very important is that we looked after the most vulnerable, we looked after our low-income families, and we looked after our seniors. So I can say to you today that after talking to the Premier after our visit, uh, we will make great strides in that area, and we will not be cutting any teacher's aides in this, in this riding, and we will not be cutting any special needs programs. Thank you. Sure. Stuart, we'll talk about that. Wilder's party supports local school boards in utilizing their resources, the resources, including reserves, as elected board members choose. And that's why we've long had a record for decentralization. The elected board members uh, were elected by the local ratepayers, and therefore they're accountable to the, uh, to the uh, taxpayers. This current government's come out and said that it's going to reduce the school board flexibility by uh, going through a complicated approval process for the uh, reserve money and I suspect they'll do another backflip on that soon. 
Uh, so for example, if the school board needed a new boiler or something like that, they'd have to do a, a lawn approval letter. In addition to that, the Wild Rose has found um, about 17 million extra in its budget for special needs, English as a second language, and, and mental, uh, mental health to help. And uh, that'll help with about 250 uh, people, uh, some of the people that are coming from out of province that uh, do need uh, help. With respect to autism, our funding has been uh, indexed to the rate of inflation. Um, and uh, with respect to special needs uh, students, uh, two policies that will be of interest to you here. One is that um, we want to try to get special needs children adequately assessed early on and then resourced and have that resource follow through. Um, the other is uh, we're, we're a big party on parental choice. So if a parent decides to send their uh, special needs child to a regular classroom, we're in favor of that and uh, making sure that that uh, student is, of course, uh, adequately resourced as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Eric, do you have a comment on that? Well, that is a good question, for sure. And the thing is, I, I certainly question the PCs uh, when you look at, at what they're doing to our educational funding. They're, like I said, like I said in my opening remarks, look at the money that they're cutting from education. They got 12,000 new students entering, entering the system this fall and no teachers to teach them. That's fine to sit here and say, oh, okay, we'll guarantee uh, there's teachers' aides for special needs students, which, which is important. Special needs students need all the help they can get. But when you look at the, uh, what they're proposing in their plan, how much they're, they're cutting the education budget by. It's huge. Whereas the NDs, on the other hand, were saying, look, we're, by, by increasing the taxes and increasing the royalties, we can get the funding so that we can properly provide proper education for our students. PCs even cut out the STEP program for, for students. We want to reintroduce it because we think it's important for our students so that they can be integrated back into the Alberta labor workforce and these kind of things. It's important. But with their, the cuts that they're making to education, I don't even know how they're going to maintain the schools under, under what they're proposing. So it, it, it's a huge problem here. They just, uh, we just can't see how they're going to do it. And yeah, we, we're in full support of, of providing teachers, teachers' aides, and, and all the things that we can do to help special needs students. I drive the handy bus in, in Hinton, and I know what's required to help help these students. Thank you very much, Eric. <clears throat> This is, <clears throat> this is a question that, that kind of follows on that, and that um, it's way, way structured. It says, how are we investing in our future if we are constantly cutting and or freezing education funding? I don't know if you need another answer to that, but uh, let's have a go at it anyway. And we'll have uh, Stuart, if he wishes, to talk about this first. I mentioned some of the things the Wild Rose is going to do with uh, special needs, but uh, one of the areas of savings in the budget we're looking at is uh, management, uh, communications. People want to go into more of those savings, but we have about 3,200 uh, top level loaded uh, management positions, uh, staff and vote, manager staff ratio 1 to 5 that I mentioned, and we'd like to. Uh, look at uh, reallocating those resources to uh, frontline uh, workers and frontline uh, positions. We'd also like to uh, respect uh, the contracts of, uh, of teachers and we won't be going after you with uh, things like uh, Bill 45 and Bill 46 and threatening your contracts uh, one month and then uh, backing off the next month. 
In addition, uh, we'd like to do a bunch of things. Refocus some curriculum uh, development, a mastery of fundamental and practical solving problems. I've mentioned the school construction pro uh, projects that we'd like to uh, go ahead with. But we support the practice of teachers giving a zero grade for our incomplete work. Um, and we'd like to clearly identify the knowledge and skill levels at each grade level and trust uh, teachers to choose the method of instruction for their classroom. We'd like to eliminate uh, mandatory school fees. I know Robin will disagree with this number, but uh, we've estimated that to be an additional cost of $85 million, and that's just uh, nickel and diming uh, parents. And we'd like to work with uh, teachers and the school boards to uh, improve the exams and I think the biggest thing that we'd like to do is decentralize some of the decision making in the school system to provide the local boards like I've mentioned with the reserve money but with their curriculum development to provide the local boards the uh, flexibility to start developing uh, programs that are more suited to their, their area. This PC government is trying to centralize and they're trying to decentralize really they don't they don't uh, have any leadership in this area to provide. Eric, do you want to respond to this? Sure. Well, that's a good one, too. Uh, it's back, back to the, the whole school issue. Uh, the NDs are, we're, we're in favor of uh, providing stable, predictable funding to school boards. We believe that they need it. Colleges and universities as well. Alberta's growing population needs quality education so that so that the uh, workers and, and uh, our students can uh, become up and coming doctors, lawyers, and everything else in, the, in our province. Right now, uh, the province of Alberta has the lowest rate of students entering our second or post-secondary education system because of funding. And the PCs have removed the funding cap and it's making it tougher for families to try and, and send their, their children to post-secondary education. They just can't afford it on $10 an hour. And that's the problem. And, and it's huge. It's a huge one. Also, they broke the promise on, on full-day kindergarten. Where'd that go? I disappeared. And that's important for the start of our students right off the beginning. And then, and then they, like I said, they've done nothing to cur curtail uh, skyrocketing school fees and busing fees. When you're a lower income family, you're trying to trying to pay for these things, and they've done nothing to reduce those to help middle income or low income families. And it's a real problem in the fall when they, when they go to put their students in, in the school system. So that so MDs are, are in favor of reducing all those things and helping our students succeed because that's our future. Thank you very much, Rob. Can I have an extra two minutes on this question and I'll answer the next question? Oh. <laughs> Well, I just get I just get a little frustrated with all of the uh, misinformation that's going out. So let, let's talk about education. We fund the best education system in, in Canada. We fund more per capita than any other province. Secondly, our Department of Education took a nine percent cut on administration fees, and what we ask school boards to do is get their administration fees in line. We have four hundred and eighty million dollars in savings in school boards unrestricted savings, unrestricted reserves. So what we've asked school boards to do as we get through this budget year is to use their reserves to make sure that we don't cut any teacher aid positions or any programming. As far as teachers go, we're paying the boards the money for the teacher increases next year, which is 2% plus a lump sum, so they'll be, they'll be kept whole. We have not taken the cap off of student tuitions in universities, as our, my friend from the ND would like to say, that's not true. The other reason that kids are not going to post-secondary education is because we live in a natural resource province, and we've done research on this. And what's happening is kids 18 years old, and you know what right here in Edson, can go get a job at the mine, they can go get a job at the mill, or they can go get a job in the oil and gas and make $100,000 a year. And that's what they're doing. 
They don't want to go to post-secondary because they can make the big bucks now. And so that's an issue, and it's an issue that we, we deal with in, uh, when uh, Minister Hancock was the Minister of Education, is how do we uh, get kids to go back to post-secondary? He actually went to industry and told them not to hire these kids. Let's get them an education. So when we look at the education system, our school boards have autonomy to make the decisions. We don't interfere. We ask them to do a good job. And then this riding, we're very lucky. Grand Yellowhead School Division does a great job. And I have a good working relationship with them. And sometimes we're gonna disagree. And right now we're disagreeing over this, because I'm saying that we're gonna use the reserves to look after teachers' aides, and we're gonna use the reserves to look after programming. There's no need to see that being cut. So again, I'd like to make that another couple minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you. This one here is, again, seems education. It says, what is your stance on the level of funding special needs kids receive for education and supports? Do you think it's enough? Do you think you are failing them with the current funding? This is very similar to a previous question, and I, I suspect that uh, we should uh, probably have, uh, have some review of it again. So, uh, Eric, would you, do you want to start with that one? What is your stance on the level of funding for special needs kids that receive for education and supports, and do you think it's enough? Do you think you are failing them with current funding? Well, I think that, was, uh, the last part, it would be, I suppose, would address for Rob. So, if you look at the first part, and we'll let Rob look at the last part. Oh, looking at it, the level of funding for special needs kids, uh, it, it's too low. It's way too low. They're not getting enough support. And uh, the ND's position is that uh, we're, we're of the opinion that they need all the help they can get. So if we can hire more teacher's aides and whatever they need to help them progress. That's the whole idea is to help them progress so they, they could become members of our society in, in whatever capacity. And if we've got to invest more in that, well then that's what we're willing to do. We're not cutting and, and expecting this, going to the reserves or whatever to try and make it work. We're, we're of the opinion provide good funding in the first place. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Stuart, do you want to address this one? Thank you for smiling. <laughs> class size is a big issue, but many teachers say a bigger problem is the complexity of classrooms. The increasing rate of special needs children, English language learners, and students with mental health issue is serious challenges to the classrooms. Like I, I mentioned, the Wild Rose Party um, sees this as a, an issue, and uh, we would be restoring about $17 million uh, to special needs, uh, ESL, and mental health. As well, we've told the boards right away that we'll let them use the reserves the way they wish so that they can fulfill their elected mandates without an additional uh, approval process. So we estimate that this will add about uh, 425 uh, people in those categories, not nearly enough, but um, that's, that's roughly what it would add uh, depending on how the boards would spend it. Thanks. Rob, I think this last part of this question would probably be addressed to you, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. I usually walk away with a question rather than the microphone. <laughs> well, the second half of the question is, do you think we're failing them with the current funding? And I guess, you know, uh, the answer would have to be yes. And I mean, I say that because it's an emotional issue. And if you're a parent with a special needs child, you want them to have the best. And, you know, I understand that. You know, so, but we do have to find a balance. And the reason I say that, you know, as we talk about spending in government, uh, when I look at our programs, and we've done a lot of research, people come to Alberta because of our program. People come to Alberta because we have great special needs programs. And again, are we funding enough? Probably not. But people come here because of what we have, because it's the best anywhere. People come here because of our healthcare programs, because we have the best. 
They come here because of education. We have the best. People come here because of the senior programs. I have young professionals that have moved into the riding and they brought their parents with them because they can get them into a long-term care space, which they can't get where they were in another.